But this year, my talk is on brutalism. Yes. Um, I don't know if you have heard about brutalism or what brutalism is. Maybe I should specify what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm talking about web design. Because <laughs> web design goes through a transition. They basically just got their C++11. And so there's a lot of new things which you might want to know. And uh, I got to know because I did build my own CMS and it's only on HTML and CSS. And there's lots of things which you can do today where you don't need JavaScript anymore for. And if you meet a web developer and you ask them like, to make a drop-down menu, um, they can't do it without JavaScript. It's like impossible for them. Uh, and if you go to many websites, a uh, drop-down menu will mostly not work without JavaScript, like lots of C++, C++ conferences. Um, but my website, meetingc++.com, proves them wrong because my, my drop-down menu works without JavaScript. Um, which also was kind of a, a wonder for this JavaScript developer. How do you do that? But let, let me get big, uh, just quickly back to uh, brutalism. So brutalist web design, this is like a handy declaration I found on the web. Uh, content is readable on all reasonable screens and devices. Only hyperlinks and buttons respond to clicks. Hyperlinks are underlined and buttons look like buttons. The back button works as expected. View content by scrolling, decoration when needed, and no unrelated content. So if you have ads on your website, maybe, you know, I don't know. Um, but um, I think the last point, I don't have to explain that to this audience. You know, performance is a feature. I think we can all agree with that. So, and, and I read that and was like, hey, that's how I build websites. So let's just check, okay? Content is readable on all reasonable screens and devices, of course. Um, only hyperlinks and buttons respond to clicks. Yeah. Um, well, okay, check boxes. They, this is, list should be added. You know, lists are always bad. You shouldn't use lists. lists. Uh, you shouldn't uh, use lists when arguing. Uh, hyperlinks are underlined and look buttons like buttons. Um, well, the buttons you find not there because there are no, there's no form on that side. Uh, that's in the PHP-driven uh, backend for uh, microservices. The back button works as expected. Yes, that's a feature. Damn, where where's the web gone? You know, if you if you read that, this is like how the web should work. Um, view content by scrolling works too. Uh, decoration when needed, and uh, of course, this is, um, you know, this, I, I, I really don't like if you have to load JavaScript to do th simple things like uh, drop down menu. And so, um, as I mentioned, I, I've, wrote, I've written my own uh, CMS. Um, for several reasons. One reason was I wanted to, to really understand what is going on with HTML and HTML5, the mo modern standards, uh, because that's probably you know what's going to be around for quite some time. And so I just thought that as, as a developer, it's the, ba the web is so basic that I w really want to be up to date to that. Um, and the other reason is, um, I talked about GDPR. Uh, if you use some, some framework which is popular to do your website, uh, there's all kinds of bugs. So there is this last week I saw when I prepared this talk, there is actually a bug in the GDPR uh, plugin or in a popular uh, WordPress plugin and that got exploited. So uh, people who use that for GDPR uh, have now a GDPR problem. And, you know, I, I run a conference and do lots of traveling and I, I don't just want to be needing to do an update on my website because there's some weird bug uh, happening in, in some framework which I don't control. And the other reason uh, was when you, when you're, when you're like writing software and there's a framework like controlling your software, uh, they release a new thing and then the web, your website breaks. The next version, they're like, yeah, sorry, the thing which you used for years, it's not supported anymore. You can, you know, and then you can rewrite the website, but we have so much data. I still want to get the old uh, conferences on the website back. Um, so. That's why, why I got started on this, and now I just want to share a little bit of what, what you can do today. 
modern CSS looks almost like modern C++. There is a paper which is called Down with Type Name, and I very much agree with it, Down with Type Name. It's a great paper. It's written by uh, Nina Rance and David von der Ford. And I talked about that paper with uh, Fabio, I think, and he was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good uh, in the committee received uh, because they actually want to get rid of type name in areas where it's not needed anymore and then writing C++ would, be, would get better for all of us. But the other thing which I really like in this paper is they have this checkbox, hide deleted text. And that's what it does. If you, if you click the checkbox, it hides it. And it does it without JavaScript, okay? It's like, again, um, you, you can kind of uh, refer to the state of the checkbox in CSS, and then you can refer that as a class to some elements and can hide elements without ever going somewhere else uh, in JavaScript or anything. So you just load the HTML page or the, the I think this is also great for proposals, you know? Um, and this is how the uh, drop-down menu works. The checkbox is stuck. Is in this case, style to CSS a little bit different, like a hamburger menu. And the only thing you actually need JavaScript for here is uh, there is no way to have like uh, the the elements which are displayed on screen get out of focus, so you cannot react on a click. And if you if you if you click on the menu, that's fine. But if you click like on on the website itself to have the menu disappear, how every proper context menu should. Um, that's where you need JavaScript for, and that's what I implemented uh, just in October. Um, and uh, responsive CSS, you know, we want to have websites which go on every screen and kind of look okay and are good to use. Um, in the past, you needed Flexbox, and then you needed a framework for web design to have and create those grids where you put your content in and then the scales and goes everywhere. But now, uh, Flexbox is still there and Flexbox is still good and for basic things in the web design it's still used um, and has its advantages. But uh, CSS grid is a new thing and I really, really uh, enjoyed watching lots of videos from Jen Simmons this uh, spring when I learned a lot about CSS grid. Uh, she's a fantastic uh, developer and has a YouTube channel Layoutland and she just keeps talking about how the new CSS features make things easier for you. And um, if you want to get into CSS grid, uh, that's, that's a very good source. Um, and I thought I'd just give you some examples. So this is a grid which is 300 pixels wide. And if, you, if, you, if your columns are and your screen is bigger than the columns times 300, then um, your column is one fraction. So if you have three columns and um, then either it's 300 pixels or it's a third. Easy. And you also can do things like this. You can do a media, a media query and have a grid which normally is uh, three columns. And when you go on the mobile view, uh, you define the grid as suddenly two columns. And um, this year, the schedule is based on CSS grid and it's not like totally perfect now but um, this, this is the per first version of it. Uh, something I wanna add for next year is I will have style checkboxes on top that you can hide or show certain elements in the, in the uh, schedule page of the conference. And in HTML, um, often a list is used. That's why you've seen a lot of uh, CSS code for this list style none, so that the list points are not visible. Um, but I, I usually, for now, prefer uh, diffs. And of course, you can do uh, transitions and animations also. And with the checkbox, you also could like kind of create events where people click on things. Um, you also have like a mouse over event on CSS, which could you know start a transition. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can do with modern CSS now, which JavaScript does not need to load for. And I think that's awesome. And also, yeah, it's just on the overview, modern CSS, uh, the checkbox hack allows you to, to, to just create websites where things are visible and then they're not visible again, just different options. 
It's actually already used in proposals for the C++ language and a lot of proposals. Uh, I was actually surprised when I read the proposals this time for San Diego, and there's a lot more proposals which use HTML now. In the past, it used to be lots of PDFs and other weird formats. Now it's mostly uh, HTML. Um, CSS grid is the new thing, which is also very, very good supported by browsers, and you really should uh, have a look at that if you do anything with websites and animations as something probably which is interesting, but I, for now I don't know where I would use animations. One idea I have is like I want to have an animated uh, picture gallery for the pictures from, from the conference and other things on the, con on the website. 